uh, I'm super happy to be uh, here participating in this uh, uh, work marathon, which is also a bed marathon, as uh, Hans Ulrike explained. And uh, I want to say Viva Yoko Ono and the 24 uh, bed that in a way she inaugurated with her performance in the Hilton International uh, Hotel, as, uh, as uh, um, Hans just uh, explained. Now, I don't see anything here. Let me see. Makes it easier, yeah? Okay. So, uh, the 24-7 bed will also be uh, the city of uh, social media in the sense that the point is also, and this has come already in the discussion, uh, that, uh, probably I have to do this, uh, that the internet and social media are fundamentally redefining the spaces in which we live or our relationship to objects and to each other. Uh, social media, in my view, is a new form of urbanization, the architecture of how we live uh, together. I uh, got into this uh, topic uh, in a very strange way. I was reading the Wall Street Journal, which I don't even read normally, but somehow I happened to be reading the business section. I must have been in a hotel or something. And then I read the most extraordinary thing. I, I read that 20, no, that 80%, this is 2012, so in the middle of the crisis uh, with a lot of people out of war, right? I read that 80%, 80% of young professionals in New York City were working regularly uh, from bed. And then I thought, to myself, what, what is happening? What, what is this about, right? And it's kind of extraordinary because, of course, millions of uh, dispersed bed beds are already taken over from concentrated office uh, buildings. So at the same time that uh, office in Midtown were half empty, uh, despite keeping appearances in the front door with the security, etc., uh, they were half empty upstairs. And in the meantime, there are millions of dispersed uh, beds in New York, but also in many other cities, I'm sure, uh, 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 that are working. So the boudoir, in a way, is defeating the office tower. Network technologies are, have removed any limit of what we can uh, do in bed. Now, how did we get uh, uh, here? Is this moving? Or maybe it's better to do it this way? No, it doesn't move either way. It moves uh, here. Ah, okay, so here we are. So how did we get here? And this is an image, of course, of his. Okay, so is this one? Yeah, how did we get here? In uh, the famous uh, test of Walter Benjamin, Louis Philippe or the interior, uh, we read that under Louis Philippe, uh, the private citizen enters the stage of history for the private person living in space becomes for the first time antithetical to the place of work. The former is constituted by the interior, the office is its complement. So, of course, uh, industrialization brought with it uh, uh, the eight-hour uh, shift and the radical separation between the home and the office or the factory, between rest and work, between night and day. And post-industrialization is collapsing work back into the home and further into the bedroom and into the bed itself. Think about this. Uh, okay, this is going on its own <laughs> for some reason. Uh, think about this advertisement, collaborate uh, in bed. Right? I mean, what, what kind of, uh, of, uh, of a statement uh, is this? So it's a collapsing work into it. The whole universe seems to be now concentrated in this small screen with the bed floating in an infinite sheet of information. To lie down is not to rest, but to move. The bed is now a site of action. But this voluntary invalid uh, obviously has no need uh, for her legs. The bed has become the ultimate prosthetic uh, and a whole new industry is devoted to providing contraptions to facilitate work while lying down, reading, writing, testing, recording, broadcasting, listening, talking, and of course, eating, drinking, sleeping, or making love, activities that seem to have been turned of late into work itself. Endless advice, as you know, is dispense about how to work on your relationships today, how you are supposed to schedule sex with your partner, because otherwise apparently it doesn't happen. Sleeping is, of course, uh, uh, definitely hard work, uh, for millions too, with the psychopharmaceutical uh, industry providing new drugs every year and an army of sleep uh, experts providing advice on how to achieve this apparently ever more elusive uh, goal. All of course in the name of higher productivity. Everything done in bed has become work. This philosophy was already uh, um, uh, in somehow embodied in the figure of Hugh Hefner, who famously almost never left uh, his bed, let alone his uh, house. He literally moved his office into his bed in 1960 when he moved into the Playboy Mansion in Chicago, 
turning into the epicenter of a global empire and his silk pyjamas and dressing gown into a kind of new business attire. I don't go out of the house at all. I'm a contemporary recluse, he told Tom Wolfe, guessing that the last time that he had been out of the, of the house or, or of the bed was three and a half months before. And in the last two years, he said he had been out of the house only nine times. Fascinated, Tom Wolfe described him as the tender, timpani, green heart of an artichoke. But of course, even when Hefner was out, he was not really out, but wrapped in a succession of bubbles, all designed to extend his interior, uh, the specially outfitted vehicles, precisely uh, the big bunny here, which is a stretch uh, uh, DC9, designed by Ron Dismith, the same architect of the, of the, uh, of the mansion, uh, with a gourmet chicken uh, kitchen, uh, a dancing floor, living room, conference space, discotheque, a wet bar, a state-of-the-art cinematography projections, a sleeping quarters for 16 gays, and of course, uh, Hefner's uh, uh, suite with an elliptic uh, uh, bed covered in Tasmanian or Boston uh, skins. And here you have Hefner arriving precisely in Heathrow with his then girlfriend, uh, Barbie. And you can see in the picture that Barbie is totally at ease and, and Hefner is a little bit like, okay, this is a bed, but it's not really my regular uh, uh, bed. In any case, uh, Playboy uh, turned the uh, bed into a workplace. Uh, from the mid-50s on, the bed becomes increasingly sophisticated, outfitted with all kinds of uh, entertainment and communication uh, uh, devices as a kind of control room. You can control the entire house uh, uh, from the bed. The bed itself, you can argue, is a house. Um, uh, it's rotating and vibrating uh, a structure. It's packed with a small fridge, hi-fi, telephone, filing cabinet, bar, microphone, dictaphone, video cameras, headphone, TV, breakfast tables, work tables and control for all the lighting fixtures uh, in the uh, mansion for the man who never wants uh, to leave. The bed uh, was uh, Hefner's office, his place of business, where he conducted interviews, made his phone calls, selected images, adjusted layouts, edited tests, ate, drank, and consulted uh, with uh, playmates. Hefner, <laughs> I have no evidence, he has said. Uh, Hefner was, uh, of course, not alone. The bed may have been the ultimate American office at mid-century. In an interview in Paris Review in 1957, Truman Capote is asked, what are some of your writing habits? Do you use a desk? Do you write on, uh, on a machine? With, to which he answers, I am a completely horizontal author. I cannot even think unless I am lying down, either in bed or stretched on a couch with a cigarette and a coffee uh, handy. Uh, if uh, uh, Truman Capote uh, 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 will follow in the long tradition of uh, uh, writers like Proust, who also wrote uh, mainly in bed, uh, architects at mid-century also set up a uh, bed uh, in, in, in a set up office in the bed. Uh, this is uh, Richard Neutra and his house in, in Silver Lake, Los Angeles. There are not only multiple opportunities uh, to, uh, for beds uh, and to lie down in this house, but he started working apparently from the moment he woke up with elaborate equipment that enabled him to design, write, or even interview in bed. As his son, uh, uh, Dion Neutra, revealed, that cre best creative time for creative thinking was early in the morning, long before any activity had started in the office below. So the office is below, it's not that it's so hard, but he wouldn't move from bed. So he says that in this letter, the son, that he stay in bed with his ideas and designs, even extending into appointments. And his one concession to convention was to put on a tie over his uh, pyjamas when receiving uh, visitors while still prop up uh, in bed. Neutra's uh, bed in his house in Silver Lake included two public phones, three communicated stations for talking with other rooms in the house, the office below, another office 500 meters uh, away, three different core bells, drafting boards, easels that folded down over the bed, electric lights and radio gramophone control from a dashboard over, overhead, a bedside a table rolling on casters which had the tape recorded, electric clock and storage compartment for all the drawings, etc. and writing equipment. So, and this is all from a letter of Neutra to his sister when he's describing all these uh, complicated sets. Uh, uh, so that he says in the last sentence of the letter, so that he could use every minute from morning to late at night. So post-war uh, America in that sense inaugurated uh, uh, the high-performance bed 
as the epicenter of, of productivity, a new form of industrialization uh, that was exp exported globally and has now been available to an international army of uh, uh, dispersed but interconnected producers. A new kind of factory without walls is constructed by compact electronics and extra pillars for the 24-7 uh, generation. The kind of equipment that Hefner had anticipated, but of some of which didn't even exist, in, in a way invented the answering machine by connecting a tape recorder to the telephone so that he could take the call of the, night, of the girl from the night before while he was busy with the uh, next one, is now, of course, expanded to the internet and social media generation who not only work in bed, but socialize in bed, exercise in bed, read the news in bed, and entertain sexual relationship with people miles away from their bed. The playboy uh, fantasy of the nice girl uh, next door is much more likely realized today with someone in another continent than in the same uh, building or neighborhood. A person you may ne never have seen before and may never see again. And it's anybody's guess uh, whether she is real, uh, that is, she exists in some time uh, or uh, uh, space, or is an electronic construction, as in the uh, film uh, Her. Uh, the uh, heart uh, in question, as you know, is an operating system that turns out to be a much more satisfying partner than a person. The protagonist lies in bed with her, chatting, arguing, making love, and eventually even breaking up in bed. If, according to Jonathan Crary, uh, late capitalism is the end of sleep, colonizing every minute of our lives for production and consumption, then the actions of this voluntary recluse are not so voluntary in the end. But it may be worth, because uh, Jonathan uh, uh, always, uh, uh, in this book, blames all in, on late capitalism, it may be worth to uh, say in passing that communism has its own ideas about bringing the bed to the workplace. In 1929, at the height of Stalin's uh, first year, uh, uh, five, uh, so first five-year plan, uh, with the working uh, day extended and mass exhaustion of factory workers in the face of staggering production quotas, the Soviet government organized a competition for a new city of rare, and then Konstantin Melnikov, who in this photograph looks extremely sleep deprived uh, to me, presented the Sonata of Sleep, which is a new kind of building type for collective uh, sleep with mechanized uh, bed, uh, rocking the workers to unconsciousness and slanted floors to eliminate the need for pillows. Uh, there were also centralized booths with a sleep attendants that will regulate temperature, humidity, smell, and even uh, sounds to maximize uh, speed. But uh, of course, the 19th century division of the city between rest uh, and war may soon become actually obsolete. So all these arguments of Jonathan maybe are already uh, obsolete. Not only have our habits and our habitat changed with the internet and social media, but actually predictions about the end of human labor in the wake of new technologies and robotization uh, are not, no longer treated as futuristic. 35 years ago, ago uh, the late uh, economist Vasiliev uh, uh, Leontief say uh, they replaced horses, didn't they? And, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, eventually uh, he says that the human worker will go the way of the horse and nobody pay any attention to him. But recently, uh, the New York Times took these uh, uh, questions into consideration when they wrote, Horses hung around in the labor force for quite some time after they were first challenged by modern communication technologies like the telegraph and the railroad, hauling stuff and people around farms and cities. But when the internal combustion engine came along, horses as a critical component of the world economy were history. Humans as war horses may also be on the way out. Economists, as we saw even earlier today, wonder what kind of economy, uh, economic model this reality will uh, lead to from growing inequalities with vast amounts of people unemployed to large redistributions in the form of the universal income, which, as you know, was considered in a referendum in Switzerland uh, a couple of years ago and rejected. Multiple trials are now underway in many places from California uh, to Finland. The end of the, pay, the paper, uh, if we look back to architecture, the interesting thing is that the end of pale labor and its replacement with creative leisure was already envisioned in utopian projects of the 60s, like Constant, uh, Super Studio, and Archithum, and almost all of them include this super equipped uh, uh, bed. So in that period, experimental <coughs> architects devoted themselves to the equipment of a new mobile nomad with a whole uh, galaxy of lightweight portable interiors with soft 
reclining spaces at the core of complex prosthetic uh, extensions, as the ones you can see here of Mike Webb, uh, Cusicol, and Switalom. Uh, in a way, they are high performance uh, beds, complete with media, artificial atmospheres, colored light, etc. But Reinhard Balham, the famous uh, art historian, wrote about a naked Jane Fonda um, flying through a space in her far line horizontal uh, bu bubble. It was a matter of uh, time uh, before John Lennon and Yoko Ono held a week long bed in for peace in the Amsterdam Hilton Ho Hotel during their honeymoon. March 1969. The idea of the bedding comes from sit-in uh, protest and was intended as a non-violent protest against war and to promote uh, world peace. Make uh, love, not war, was of course the slogan of the day, but to the disappointment of journalists, Joko and, and John and were fully dressed in their white pyjamas, sitting in bed, as John put it, like angels. The bed had taken over from the street as a site of protest. They invited the world uh, press into their room in the Hilton Hotel. Here you have the Hilton Hotel and their room, the 902 that you see here. And you can see this incredible amount of journalists that are practically in the bed uh, with them. And they invite them to, to be there from 9 a.m. Uh, to 9 p.m., as Hans Ulrich said before. Treating the bed in that sense as a workspace with journalists uh, streaming in and images streaming out. Here, a little bit late, this is the bed from the outside, bed piece, hair piece are the posters that we have also reproduced in the uh, Serpentine, uh, and here uh, they are, and they conduct another one in Montreal uh, later on, uh, another week long in Montreal, where they also uh, <laughs> get in bed with a lot of uh, characters, like Tim Leary uh, is uh, uh, there uh, in bed, and where uh, they recorded Give Peace uh, a Chance. Um, so why I am talking about all these uh, examples? Because I think they anticipate the current uh, working conditions. In fact, when asked uh, why in bed, Joko say, among other things, that they were working very hard. It's hard to do a marathon, right? And, and so they say, uh, she says that the bed is a comfortable place uh, to do uh, this. Well, if architects have stopped thinking to conclude here, if architects have stopped thinking about what is the new situation in which we are uh, living, unlike the 60s, the city has started to redesign itself without us. In today's attention deficit disorder, we have discovered that we work better uh, in short bars punctuated by rest, and there are many companies that are providing these sleepy pods in the office to maximize uh, productivity. So bed and office are never very far apart. Uh, in the 24-7 uh, uh, world, where you have these self-enclosed uh, uh, things, and even these hotels where you take naps in the middle of, uh, of the city, uh, this city uh, that doesn't uh, sleep is no longer the city of the uh, office towers uh, with uh, late at night. So between the bed inserted in the office and the office inserted in the bed, a whole new horizontal architecture has taken over, uh, that is magnified by the flat networks of social media that have themselves been fully integrated into the professional business and industrial environment in a collapse of traditional distinctions between private and public work and play, uh, rest and action. The bed itself, uh, it, with its ever more sophisticated masters, lining and technical at attachments, is the basis of an intrauterine environment that combines the sense of deep interiority with the sense of hyperconnectivity. Uh, to the outside. So may want to ask a final uh, question. What is the nature then of this new interior in which we have decided collectively to check ourselves in? What is the architecture of this prison in which night and day, work and play are no longer differentiated and we are permanently under surveillance? New media turns us all into inmates constantly under sur surveillance even as we celebrate endless connectivity. We have become all contemporary recluses as Hugh Hefner put it, a half a century ago. Thank you very much.